Hey, folks, I've been going all this time and I thought we were live. But guess what? <laughs> we're live now. <laughs> I've been talking for 10 minutes and I thought we were live. Thank you, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Hey, I'm telling you, I don't know where my mind was at, but I look, we were just, hey, we were you missed out on some good information. <laughs> All right. Anyway, <laughs> welcome to, I don't even know how to get started now. Welcome back to the Unbridled Living in Costa Rica podcast. <laughs> I don't know if I can say welcome back. Uh, they weren't there. So anyway, <laughs> Doug's like, are we doing this? And I'm like, what do you mean? Are we doing this? <laughs> I am doing this. I didn't know I was doing it by myself, right? <laughs> so, are we doing this? Sorry. Yeah, we're doing it, Doug. So, sorry about that, folks. Anyway, anyway, now I got to back up and I'm all, I'm all discombobulated. Anyhow, all right. So, hey, look, today we are talking about the weather in Costa Rica. Man, I'm going to be answering questions like, hey, where is the coldest and hottest place in Costa Rica? Hey, do you ever have to shovel snow or break ice? And uh, hey, is the weather uh, on the Caribbean side the same as the weather on the Pacific side? And hey, how many seasons does Costa Rica have? What about tornadoes and hurricanes? Uh, and you know what? I love how in the United States, the weather, the leaves, you know, the autumn time turns, uh, you know, turns red and orange and, uh, you know, the leaves fall. I love that. But does that happen in Costa Rica? And, you know, hey, what is the weather like where we live at? OK, we'll be talking about all that and much more. But before we get started, hey, uh, if you if this is your first time here, well, I'm Alan Richard with Off the Grid Homestead in Costa Rica. And that's my wonderful co-host right there. Rebecca. And so uh, today we're just going to have a whole lot of fun. And we obviously want to wish you a happy Easter and uh, or happy Resurrection Sunday, whatever it is that you're celebrating today and hope you're just having an awesome day. And so, uh, hey, uh, but before we get started, what's been happening on the off grid homestead? A lot of repairs and maintenance. We <laughs> pretty much nothing on the house. Didn't get anything done on the house, but we have been doing repairs and maintenance. Uh, you know, I did get to cut pretty much all of the grass this week. OK, now, while that seems doesn't sound very exciting, it is exciting because this is in the summertime and where normally in the United States, you're having to cut your grass once a week, you know, in the summer. Well, in Costa Rica, because it's not hardly raining, my, it's been almost two months since I cut my grass and my grass wasn't, you know, a mile high. So, you know, that that's a little that's something that's very different about Costa Rica. OK, you move the sprinklers around the yard. I moved and the it rained. <laughs> Of course, if you want it to rain, move your sprinklers around, water everything, and then it rains. Now, the good thing about it actually raining, because as you, as most of you folks may or may not know, we're at the very end of rainy season, and um, so it's usually in its in its driest part of the year, and uh, it really has almost no rain. You get tiny spits of rain, not much, but we got a doozy of a rain. What was that on Wednesday? Yeah, Wednesday, huh? Huge, huge, huge rain which is an indicator that the uh, dry season is coming to an end. We're getting ready to get into that transition phase, which we'll be talking more about as we talk about the weather. So we got in a great, great rain. Uh, also, you know, um, had to actually swing through the trees like Tarzan and fix my water line because I got my water line suspended in this one area and a tree had fallen on it, stretched out, caused a lot of leaks. And I'd been fixing leak after leak. So I just repaired a big section. Uh, and so I, I fixed that water leak. And um, and then, of course. Rebecca had this crazy idea on Wednesday. I was craving cake. <laughs> so. Rebecca was craving cake. So cats out of the bag. Rebecca's pregnant. Boy, that's not till tomorrow. It's not April Fool's yet. <laughs> okay, okay, she's not pregnant. <laughs> but, but that would have been good if today was April Fool's Day, okay? So anyway, she was craving cake. Believe it or not, she conned me. She conned me into going, uh, you know, as you know, folks, we're way up the mountain, a couple of hours into town. Get her some cake. 
So I'm inside the store and I am like filming the cake, right? And she's like, oh yeah, yeah, that one right there. That looks good. Man, I buy this cake. Now I didn't know the price I bought, but after I look at the receipt, that's 15,000 colonas. 30 bucks for this cake, man. I would have made you, I would have told you put it back. I would not have paid that much. And it wasn't even good. I asked the bad part. We get home, I I, we get a slice. She gets a slice. We're eating this cake. She like, it had way too much nutmeg in it. She like, this ain't no good. We throwing this away. So we end up throwing that away. I mean, look, $30 for cake, two hours down the mountain, two hours back, all that anyway. That's crazy, but I don't often get crazy. So, like so you can go ahead and call me the loco gringo because I'm crazy to drive yeah. five hours to get my honey some cake. Now, you know you was just monkeying around. Okay. Well, since I was monkeying around, I guess that that's a, a good time for me to tell you. I did have something happen just a, a few minutes before this live. Okay. Some folks came by here to encourage me on this next podcast. Let me show you. So uh, the, the monkeys were right there. I'm talking about, I can almost reach out and touch them. Uh, and so they came by and of course, Nikki loves to look at them. The monkeys love to look at Nikki. But anyway, they were right there. Just love living out here. And you know, a lot of places in Costa Rica, you know, you don't have to be remote like we are. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember when I was living down on uh, Playa Hermosa doing that big job site, the monkeys would often come by uh, right there. So we get to see them in uh, Dominical. And we've seen them on the Caribbean side, you know, right yeah. there in the national park. Absolutely. Oh, and Manuel Antonio. We've seen them in a lot of places. Seen them in a lot, a lot of places. Oh, check out what check out what Karen says. Yeah, you might be a crazy loco gringo, <laughs> but that's a sign of true love gonna get you a honey some cake. <laughs> So anyway, I don't know. I, I, I kind of might agree with Pig's Pig. Should have got a weed cake. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> At least we'd have been happy that it wasn't no good. <laughs> so anyway, you know, uh, uh, anyway. So, hey, let's get into it. We're going to be talking about the weather. And, and so just to give you an idea, because a lot of, you know, there's a lot of information on the Internet, uh, lots of people doing videos about rainy season, uh, you know, and the times. And there's a lot, a lot of misinformation. OK, um, you know, Rebecca and I have lived uh, whew, just about all over Costa Rica. And, you know, when you come to, to when you travel to Costa Rica, it's totally different. You really need to live places to kind of figure things out. And we, you know, I've lived in over 25 different houses and locations, gotten a chance to experience a whole lot, learn, talk to a bunch of Ticos, made a lot of Tico friends, you know. And so anyway, let me just give you an idea. For those that don't know, OK, uh, to give you an idea of how big Costa Rica is, because some people think Costa Rica is an island. You know, they, they commented I'm like, no, 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 no. You're thinking of Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico. <laughs> OK, but Costa Rica is a land bridge between North America and South America. And so I think most everybody knows what the United States looks like. And almost everybody, if you say, do you know where Texas is? They're like, oh, yeah, because Texas is so huge. Right next to Texas is this itty bitty state called Louisiana, tiny state. So if you ever go look at the map, you'll you'll get a tell. Well, Costa Rica is about half the size of Louisiana. Costa Rica is tiny, yet it's got so much diversity, so much wildlife. It is really amazing. OK, but why is that that the temperature is so diverse in uh, in Costa Rica for as small as it is? Yeah, you would think in such a small area, but it's because of the mountains. The mountains? The mountain ranges. Yeah. Yeah. What else? Beaches? Yeah, the beaches. You know, because it has weather coming from the Caribbean side and weather coming from the Pacific side. 
and meeting like that. And then there's a ma huge mountain range that runs right down the center. Right through the center. Of. So, and then you, of course, you also have the rainforest. You've got the cloud forest. And with the rainforest, cloud forest, mountain ranges, it creates a lot of micro environments, okay? Which gives you a ton of different temperatures. And, but the temperature ranges are minimal and that's because of our proximity to the equator, which means that because we are so close to the equator, it's very easy to get sunburnt with just a little bit of exposure to the sun. OK, so anyway, that kind of just gives you a little bit of an idea. But, you know, on average, just on average, OK, the average temperature range all over Costa Rica on average is uh 63 degrees Fahrenheit to 81 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's about a 20 degree range in Celsius for all our Celsius friends, 7.2 degrees Celsius to 27.2 degrees Celsius. So not a big variation because of how close we are to the equator. Okay. So, uh, Hey, let me show you, just kind of give you an idea. I'm going to share my screen and, uh, I'm going to show you why, uh, there's why there's a lot of misinformation and, and a website that you're going to love to use if you decide to come to Costa Rica. So give me a second here. I should have already had this on the screen, but I'm going to present this right now. Let me get the entire screen. All right. So now you should be able to see my screen right now. And if you're look, matter of fact, let me just double check real quick. You know what I'm going to do real quick? Hang on one second. I'm going to, I'm going to move this over here so that I can see. So if you're looking at my screen uh, and you're doing research, say that you're doing research on the internet and you're trying to find out, you know, the closest pace is Costa Rica. Well, this website is weatherandclimate.com. And you think, oh, wow, this, they probably have reputable information. And if you take a look at this website, then this website is giving you uh, the coldest places in Costa Rica by minimum means temperature. In other words, the average temperature. And if you take a look, it shows you, you know, the coldest place being San Miguel Heredia. And then it goes down to being the least coldest all the way down here being uh, this Atalanta Lemoyne. OK, now the thing is, because I know Costa Rica so well, I can see that, well, if I look at it, I'd say, well, this is not true because I don't see Cheripo Mountain on there. OK, so let me go and show you uh, and to give you an idea why Costa Rica is affected. So here's Google Maps right here. OK, and if you look at Google Maps, obviously you see that Costa Rica is sitting right here. And so, you know, as I as we discussed a while ago, hey, is the Lemoyne side the same uh weather as what's over here on the Pacific side. Well, the, you know, the Pacific side, you always hear so much about how, you know, the, the weather, the weather, the weather. Uh, and it's very different because we've had rainy seasons and dry seasons. Well, the weather that's over on the Lemoyne side, the Caribbean side, it is affected by the weather patterns that come off the Caribbean side. And the weather patterns on the Caribbean side is affected by the hurricanes and stuff that come through the Atlantic Ocean. So, no, uh, the, the Caribbean side is very, very different than the Pacific side. And because there is this humongous mountain range that splits Costa Rica right down the center, it's almost as if you get, the clouds come over and they can't get over the mountain range. And so this side is very, very different. Uh, doesn't even have a rainy season or a dry season. Yet, if you go look on the internet, because bloggers and people are trying to put Costa Rica in this box, they want to say, oh, yeah, their rainy season is shorter, blah, blah. No, no, no. They don't have a rainy season and a dry season. That's kind of like saying that, you know, the United States has a rainy season. Well, it doesn't. But, you know, you always hear, uh, what is it? Uh, March winds, April showers. Okay, we get April showers. Oh, guess what? The United States has a rainy season and it's 30 days in April. <laughs> no, you know. So, you know, the the Caribbean side doesn't have a rainy season. And I mean, it rains on and off. It, the weather pattern on the, on the Caribbean side is very much a whole lot like what we typically get over in the United States, you know, which is right up here, which if we go back, we were talking about 
we were talking about Texas and Texas being this humongous state right here and Louisiana being this tiny state right here. And Costa Rica is about half that size. And that might give you an idea. And we were talking about, you know, the size of Costa Rica. Okay. So you can see how small Costa Rica is here. Okay. So, you know, uh, the weather over on the Pacific side is all affected by what's going on on the Pacific over here. So anyway, that gives you an idea of why. Okay. And hey, you just go to maps.google.com to see this. And I think most people know that. But hey, this is a great website. And I put this website over in the um, in the description. So if you want access to this website, you can click the link in the description and see this. Now, you, this here, you know, you can click and see what the temperature is. Obviously, the, the redder it is, the hotter it is, uh, the more yellow it is, the cooler it is. And so, um, you know, when we talked about this website, not actually showing all of the facts. Well, let me explain why. Okay. So this is, um, this website is zoom.earth and this is a live map telling you what the temperature is right now. Obviously it's in Celsius. And so you can see what the weather is and you can kind of move your cursor, move your mouse and you can see, oh, way down here, it's 29 degrees Celsius. But you know, you come way over here. So take a look. Now I know Costa Rica kind of like the back of my hand. Here's San Isidro right here. Uh, here's Buenos Aires. We live way up in the mountain over in here, okay? But over in this area is Cheripo Mountain, Costa Rica's highest peak. Well, guess what? You don't see any of these little uh, temperatures over here. Well, why is that? Well, obviously, they don't have a weather station up here. And since they don't have a weather station, whenever you go to a lot of websites that give you the weather, well, they're not giving you the weather or the temperature up here because they don't have a weather station. But this is really an absolutely awesome map. And you can see what the temperatures are. And it's live. So, you know, if you're if you want to look at this to say, you know what? Do we want to live on the beach? Dang, look how hot it is. Well, what about wind? You can click up here. And look, you can see the winds right now. And most of the time, uh, there's not a lot of wind in Costa Rica, but there is a windy season in Costa Rica, which is typically around uh, December and January. Uh, and, and, and you won't feel it in most of Costa Rica. Usually the winds, you'll feel it over in the mountains. But then, you know, you can click here. You can take a look at, you know, participation. And look, right now, the rain. Yeah, participate. Stop <laughs> being a participate. Rebecca had to correct me. It ain't participation. It's say it. Precipitation. She can't even say it. <laughs> Precipitation. Okay. The rain is what it means. That's a fancy word for and rain. And it's not Lemoyne. Well, oh, it's lemon. Lemoyne. <laughs> All right. So anyway, and if you take a look, it's not raining anywhere in Costa Rica, according to this map. And this is a live map, which makes sense because we are in the dry season. But, you know, it wouldn't be uncommon to see it raining over on the Caribbean side. So, hey, this is really, uh, you know, you can check out the humidity and a lot of things. And, and look, you can say, OK, well, this is the temperature, but it actually feels like. So let's take a look at San Jose. San Jose is 22. But what does it actually feel like? Let me check that. And it says, well, it actually feels like 23, maybe because they got a little bit of wind. So anyway, that's a really great, great uh, uh, map to look at. So anyway, just thought I'd share that with you. Yeah, I find every time we go to San Jose, it's quite breezy. It, it, it is breezy over there. Lots of, of, of cool air, right? Mm. Uh, let me, there we go. All right. So anyhow. Uh, that kind of, you know, is, is a great, you know, kind of like, like, like Doug said, Hey, this is a great interactive map, which can really help you to, uh, learn a lot about the weather in Costa Rica. Okay. So, uh, it's, it's still not going to help with all those microclimates. Though. Th that's right. Which, you know, that's a good point you brought up because even though you have that interactive map, there's lots of microclimates and because of those microclimates, the weather the rainy season, the dry season, all those things are different, right? right. So <clears throat> anyway, that kind of just gives you an idea. So, hey, let's get to that first question. Where is, hey, and you know what? I want you guys to participate. N not rain on me. I want you to participate. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, hey, where do you think is the coldest, coldest part of Costa Rica? So go ahead and put that in the chat box while I enjoy some apple juice. 
who knows where is the coldest place in Costa Rica? Matter of fact, hey, do you think it snows? Do you think you might could go skiing? What about breaking ice? Think you'll ever have any icicles coming off your windshield? <laughs> okay. Well, uh, <laughs> Reckon says the coldest place is your place. <laughs> I guess it all depends on how I'm feeling. <laughs> but so anyway, uh, hey, Eduardo says that the coldest place is, is Colorado and San Jose. It's cold and super nice weather. Uh, Doug says that the coldest place is, uh, uh, oops, Doug says Trojas and uh, is zero, <laughs> sorry, zero. Okay. And the actual answer, well, guess what? This person right here, Shevel, uh, the, the Corderilla, the Talamaca. You are absolutely right. I bet she is a Tika. So she looks like an educated Tika, and she is absolutely right. But the, the detailed answer is what Karen says. It's the tallest mountain. It can get snow and ice, but I can't remember the name of that one. Well, you're right, Karen. The actual coldest place is Mount Cheripo. Mount Cheripo is Costa Rica's tallest mountain at 12,530 feet. Well, that's 300 wait, 3,820 meters in altitude. For as long as Costa Rica has been keeping records, it's been said that the coldest it ever got was minus nine degrees Celsius, which is 16 degrees Fahrenheit. I know I'm giving you all this worthless information because none of you are going to go move and live at Mount Cheripo. But so that you know, there has never been any snow in Costa Rica. While it's possible it could snow on Mount Cheripo, they've had hail, but they've not had snow, okay? And, uh, hey, I've actually climbed Mount Cheripo. Uh, me and a, and a guide was going up there. It was during the pandemic, and uh, we didn't even get all the way to the top. started raining. He wanted to turn around. I'm like, nah! Anyway, but we got up there, and there's water barrels where they're collecting water. You know, when it's hot, people can get water. And it was actually ice. We had to actually break ice in the water barrels up there. So, yes, it it was um, uh, it was very, very uh, uh, cold up there. And uh, so, anyway. She uh, is not a Tika. She's from North Carolina. Well, okay. I'm going to put that up there. She Shevel says, I'm not an Antica. I I'm didn't sure mean to offend you. Anything, name, and I'm sure I'm butchering your name. She says she's from North Carolina. But hey, you sure do look like Antica, so you'll blend in blend in with no problem. Okay, so anyway. Hey, so the, anyway, that gives you an idea. But thanks for correcting me. I don't mind being corrected at all, okay? Um, and of course, hey, she takes it lighthearted. So she... Anyway, it's a good thing. That's a good thing. So anyway. All right. So since we now know the coldest place, hey, guys, what is the hottest place in Costa Rica? Now, surely everybody knows the hottest place in Costa Rica. And so uh, and 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 to give you a hint, uh, it was has been recorded. OK, while I can't prove this, I checked several different places. The hottest it got in Costa Rica. So you put your comments in there. Where do you think it's the hottest? I'll tell you how hot it got. According to records, it shows that it got to be 109 degrees Fahrenheit, OK, which is 42.8 degrees Celsius. So what is the hottest place in Costa Rica? Hey, if you've ever been to one of my relocation retreats, you know without a doubt what's the hottest place in Costa Rica. <laughs> hey, no, nope, not the coldest place, Eduardo, the hottest place. So, hey, uh, hey, well, you know what? Um, De Dennis says that one of the hot places is this place in Guanacaste. And you are right. It does get hot there. Nicoya does get really hot. But the uh, and look, Reckon says it's got to be close to Liberia. It does get hot there. Well, the true answer, the hottest place in Costa Rica, you can go to any beach, okay? Now, I kind of almost want to argue that because I think you and I lived at one of the hottest places. Oh, yeah, that was in that valley at Patrillo Grande. We were living in a tiny town of Patrillo Grande. Indeed was a valley. Hardly ever any wind, super hot. And if it's going to be that hot, I better see some ocean. That's right. You know what I think makes a difference? I don't know this for a fact, but just from experience, when there's not a lot of vegetation, when they cut all the trees down, you know, and, yeah. and it's just um, cows have 
eating the grass down to nothing and you got that scorching heat you know it just it feels hotter that's why Petro grande felt so hot yeah, because there was a lot of cattle land um they pr pretty yeah much it was cut it, was clear cut. it was cut yeah you know it was, so it, it was extremely it was hot, hot there even though they had know? a river once you get close to the water it felt cooler yeah now so the the but and typically the hottest place to actually live is going to be anywhere close to the beach. But it was recorded in Punta Arenas, Costa Rica, which is a small port town on the Pacific side that in 1964, it was 109 degrees Fahrenheit. So that, you know, but anywhere, if you're on the beach, because a lot of people come to Costa Rica, and they're like, oh, I'm going to live on the beach. I'm going to live on the beach. And you know what? Looking at people uh, swinging on hammocks on the beach, on the Internet, it's a lot more comfortable looking at it on the Internet. <laughs> It actually be in there, right? And having to take three showers a day just to get some relief. <laughs> oh, look! When it, I mean, when I was living uh, in in uh, on on the beach, you know, I was there just a couple of minutes away from the beach, and I was actually taking three showers a day because you just you're constantly hot. So you know, it's good. To, I mean, this is a really important video to kind of give you an idea uh, of what the weather is like. Okay, but anyhow, it just kind of gives you an idea of what that weather is. So hey. Now, most of you guys already know this. So let's talk about the rainy seasons. What are the two primary seasons in Costa Rica? Because, you know, in the United States, we're so used to having four seasons. You know, we got spring, summer, autumn, and winter, okay? And, and that's kind of nice. Um, uh, it's nice to have the change in seasons, but I love that we that the temperature is so nice all the time. You know, we're outdoor people and we love to be outdoors all the time. We can exercise, ride our bikes. If you get caught in the rain, it's never, never, never cold unless, you know, you're going over the mountain, you're going over the mountain on a motorcycle and you're soaking wet. Woo! my goodness. I felt like my hands had icicles on them. But, it, you know, you know, which, you know, that's a good thought. You know, um, in, in a lot of places in the United States, people have died of hyperthermia. Where they where their body temperature just drops and they get cold. I know some of you wouldn't believe it, but people have actually died of hyperthermia in Costa Rica. In fact, that's why they call that mountain pass that runs between San Isidro and San Jose. They actually call it the uh, road of death. That's right. It's the mountain of death, and that's a uh, um, uh, someone actually put it up here. Uh, uh, here we go. No, uh, uh, the. Uh, Anyway, it's it's uh, I forget how it is in Spanish. Anyway, I can't remember what it is in Spanish. Maybe one of you guys know what it's called in Spanish, it's but it's 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 Morto de Certo de Morte. Anyway, it's it's Mountain of Death. And a lot of people would hike back and forth. And, and that highway that goes from San Jose down the middle of Costa Rica, okay, uh, into San Isidro. Well, that mountain people used to hike it and some people would die on that highway because it would get so cold. Of course, it wasn't a highway then. It was a, a dirt road, but it would get so cold that some people would get hypothermia and die. So yeah, it, it's cold enough in that area. Look, people in that area are wearing coats and jackets and, and hoodies all the time. So it does get cold. But anyway. Our, um, our neighbor told us, remember for his birthday, he was telling us about when he was a young man and they would move cattle and they would take that pass and so many people had um, had died from hypothermia, moving cattle or just traveling yeah. uh, on mm -hmm. foot. That they had built little um, huts, little yeah, little Cabin, cabins yeah. Mm -hmm. all along the way, like a day's uh, walk. Right. And they had firewood and stuff for for the people, so that people would stop. Dying yeah. from hypothermia. Yeah, because our actual neighbor, uh, that was one of the jobs he had, you know, I think he said with his father where they were and he was young and they were moving cattle, you know. So anyway, uh, it, it can get extremely cold. But anyway, the two primary seasons, most of you know, is, you know, uh, and it's exactly what I saw. Um, Uh, Karen put in here, or Nancy put in here, Nancy put the wet season uh, and the dry season or the green season. Okay, so which one is the green season? So the green season obviously is the wet season. So you have rainy season, you have dry season. Now, just so you know, okay, uh, yeah, that is, you know, almost anywhere in Costa Rica. Almost anywhere. Well, let me ask you, let me ask you, 
okay? Because there's so, so much misinformation out there. And hey, I want to know how many of you got the wrong information. How many months out of the year is rainy season? Somebody tell me, how many months out of the year is rainy season, okay? Uh, and so- Is that a trick question? Is that a trick question? <laughs> I'll say for the most part. So in general, in general, people put your answers in there, put your answers in general, all over Costa Rica in general, it's the same. But Costa Rica does have microclimates. And in those microclimates, it is different. Some areas are different. We live in a microclimate. OK, so is anybody brave enough to put in there how many months out of the year does it is the rainy season. So nobody's putting it up there just yet, but I do know we get a little bit of a, a delayed effect here. So for the most part, Shovel says four months, question mark. Uh, Janice says seven months rainy season. Nancy says six months, okay? Well, for the most part, in general, all over Costa Rica, because we have lived in 25 different locations and, and traveled all over, but for the most part, most of Costa Rica, it's six months, six and six, okay? Now, uh, some people say, well, I'll just ask the Tico. And there's nothing wrong with it asking a Tico because obviously it makes sense. A Tico ought to know when is the dry season and when is the rainy season. And look, I got a good friend. His name's Pablo. We argued forever. And he's like, oh, it's it's, he would say it was nine months of rain, three months of dry. And I actually went to Google and proved to him. He's like, oh, no, it's wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. Now, is the Tico lying to you? No, he's not. You see, where Pablo lived at, his perspective is that it was rain nine months out of the year. And where he lived at, yes, it did. It rained nine months out of the year. He was in this microclimate. But most Ticos don't travel all over Costa Rica. Pablo doesn't. He lived most of his life right there. And so guess what? He would tell everybody rainy season was nine months out of the year. Uh, we've traveled all over the place. And of course, we have discovered that, hey, most of the places, it's six months and six months. And write this down because I see misinformation all the time. Rainy season is typically from May to October. That's generally when you're going to get all of your rain, that six months. Dry season is normally from November to April. Now, generally, in October, you know, last two weeks of October, first two weeks of November, it begins to transition. And like right now, it's, you know, April, you know, we got our first rain a couple of days ago, end of March, and it will rain two or three times in April. It will begin to transition in April. But heck, by the time May gets here, we're going to be getting rain on a regular basis. If it's a typical year. It, we had El Nino and um, La Nina effect the last couple of years. That's right. And I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, uh, typically it, what I'm giving you is typical stuff, but you do have things that change for the people that's been here the last two years. You, you are totally clueless what the normal weather patterns are because it, the El Nino rained a whole lot. The La Nino, very, very dry. So anyway, it, you know, it, it does change, but typically, uh, but unfortunately, you know, the reason there's a lot of bad information on the internet is anybody can publish anything on the internet okay so hey it's good to have people like us who hey you know we've been living we can tell you uh you know th this information from experience but once again doesn't mean we're right we're just telling you from our experience my experience with the weather regardless of where we have lived what's been important to me is what time of the day would it start raining dry season i didn't have to worry about clothes because we we put our clothes out you know i hang the clothes out to dry on a line and so dry season, don't have to pay attention to the to the time. Right. Rainy season, depending on where we have lived, sometimes it starts raining as early as 11 o'clock. Some places we've been, it wouldn't be till the afternoon. So regardless, during rainy season, I'd have to pay attention on, you know, clothes washing day. But even in the middle of rainy season, with the exception of a few weeks out of the, the season, there's usually sunshine, you know, like pleasant weather the for the morning. So it could always dry the clothes. Few times uh, during rainy season, every year so far, I'm like, man, we need a dryer. I've got to get a dryer because the clothes just would not dry <laughs> because uh, it was too many days in a row. 
And that's something to uh, to consider too when uh, with the solar panels. Mm -hmm. But for most of Costa Rica, for most of Costa Rica where we've lived at, what time did it typically start raining in the rainy season? In your most, opinion, on an average, I'd have to say around noon. Noon. Well, noon. It, to me, my perspective is noon. It start clouding up, but almost always at two, about two o'clock, it would start raining. You could almost set your clock by that. But here's the deal: uh, whenever you do find your slice of paradise, you're gonna find out that wherever you live at. If it starts raining at two o'clock, well, it almost will be that way. If it starts raining at 11 o'clock, like where we're at here, a lot of times because we're in a microclimate, it will begin raining normally around 11, 12 o'clock. Okay. Now, uh, my neighbor that lives just down the street, we're super good friends, help each other all the time. I ask him, uh, what is the rainy season? He says, oh, well, it's always seven months out of the year. Well, he doesn't go anywhere. He's born and raised right here. And yes, we're in a microclimate right here. Well, we're at seven months out of the year, it is raining. Five months out of the year, it is uh, dry. So it's, uh, but we're way up in the mountains. It's very, very different. We're in a microclimate. Over in the Rivas area, well, that's where Pablo lived at. And Pablo, normally in the Rivas areas, it was typically eight or nine months out of the year rain. Okay. So you just and have not, to understand. Not the whole day. So, I mean, we had a friend that um, said he hates Costa Rica because he took a vacation. Um, for a week, a week long vacation in Costa Rica, and he said it rained the entire week, all day long, and that does happen occasionally because rarely, of, uh, though, right? But depressions. But he know, happened to come at the to, bad time. Yeah, he just happened. Poor thing, he, he picked a bad week for his vacation. But um, that's not typical. Um, usually, the mornings are clear. The evenings, you know, the afternoons, the evenings, right? Have some rain. And um, I was saying about the solar panels because. We have had like a tropical depression come around. That's why it was. It's good to have an alternate source um, of, power of power if you're living on just solar, right? It, right, because uh, it has gone. What was it? Seven days or so yeah. with mm -hmm. no sunshine, and so the mm -hmm. the batteries, you know, were depleted. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, so it, it does. Yeah, it does make a huge difference on where you live at. And hey, talking about depressions. Uh, you know, hey, has has Costa Rica? What about tornadoes and hurricanes in Costa Rica? Uh, you know, uh, a lot of people have asked. Well, what about hurricanes? You know, does Costa Rica has Costa Rica ever had a hurricane? Now, uh, we were looking at that map a while ago. Remember, and the hurricanes come from the uh, Caribbean side. Okay, and as long as Costa Rica has been publishing information or publishing or, or I, I shouldn't say publishing keeping but documenting yeah. keeping records costa rica states that there's never had a single hurricane hit landfall now has there been hurricanes everybody knows hurricanes are huge 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 well uh, hurricanes have affected costa rica Hurricanes have caused flooding, lots of rain, blown in tons of mosquitoes. Uh, we were living on the Caribbean side when it blew in a ton of mosquitoes you know, and caused a lot of problems. OK, but Costa Rica has never had a hurricane actually hit landfall, make landfall, make yeah. landfall. OK, now. Uh, so, so that in other words, you could kind of feel safe that you don't have to worry about. But what about the, tornadoes? But, well, the outer bands of hurricanes. Did you say that I was? Yeah, I went yeah. Okay. So the outer bands is what you know, because hurricanes are huge. They'll cause some some flooding and lots of rains. Mm -hmm. And so, Torrential obviously, the friend you bad. were talking about obviously came here when maybe a hurricane was passing uh, on the Lemoyne side or the the uh, Caribbean side, and he got stuck at a bad time of the year, you and know, those, those outer bands can be detrimental to, um, in Costa Rica because the land is saturated, you know, if it's going on during a uh, rainy season and causes a lot of landslides, mm -hmm. you know, we've mentioned that before. So. Now, but, but tornadoes, you were saying. Yeah. So what about tornadoes? So as I did some research on, on tornadoes, you know, it's very, very, very rare to get a tornado in Costa Rica. Now, I did a little bit of research and, uh, you know, the Tico Times, I think it's called TicoTimes.net. It's a fairly good resource to get information and they'll report on hurricanes, tornadoes and all that. The last time, the last time the Tico Times did an article on a, a tornado was June 6, 
2013. So, dang, that's been over 10 years ago that they did an article on a tornado. And they actually did an article on September 5th of 2008, even a few years longer. They said it was a tornado, but it wasn't a tornado, so they had to correct it. So, anyway, uh, they have had some strong winds, and it looked like a tornado, and debris was like this, but it never developed into a tornado. So, in most cases, you don't have problems with tornadoes. In contrast to Louisiana, which has hurricanes, it has an entire season, hurricane season, and it has tornadoes that root regularly spin off of um off of tornadoes i mean off of hurricanes yeah. so it's it's got double dose oh yeah because we live in an area where there's lots of tornadoes lots of hurricanes and like you said a lot of these tornadoes spin off of the hurricanes right and you know i think uh, i i think because costa rica uh because of all of the different mountain ranges and the topography, uh, you just don't have because it requires a certain amount of wind to develop a t tornado. So I don't know. I'm not a meteorologist. So anyhow, but you said that one good, babe. I said I, I pronounce that word good. Man, big words. Me and big words don't get along. <laughs> anyway, hey, but what about autumn? Autumn in Costa Rica. I love, do the, do the leaves change colors in Costa Rica? Okay, here's a trick question for you. I shouldn't have said it's a trick question. <laughs> Does, do the leaves in Costa Rica fall? I mean, come on. You know, we know that every year, what is it, around October, the leaves start falling. September, October, the leaves start falling. Man, you got to get out the, the rake. Do the leaves shed its leaves in Costa Rica? So, hey, put that in the comment box. I want to know. Tell me your thoughts. Maybe you know the answer. Do the leaves actually fall in Costa Rica? And if, 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 if they do, what time of the year do they drop their leaves? Okay. I'd like to get your input. Okay. So um, uh, let me know. So, you know, in, I will tell you that in Costa Rica, I've not ever seen the leaves change colors. Now, what is kind of neat is... Is it at the beginning of, or is it at the very end of rainy season? If you're looking at the mountain ranges, you'll see these trees with these great big, beautiful yellow flowers on them, purple. orange purple. flowers, purple flowers. Those typically, I, I think, are the end of rainy season, huh? Oh, I can't remember. Well, anyway, but, you know, so, if you know, we love looking, you know, when we were in the United States, man, we would, during the autumn time, we would drive and we'd go look at the different color trees, okay? So, so um, I want to know, do the leaves in, do the trees in Costa Rica, do they drop their leaves? Do you have to get out your rake? Reckon well, has the right answer. Well, I don't know if Reckon has the right answer. She says on certain trees. Well, it's true because that's okay. what I was But I want to know, Reckon, I said, give me the time of the year. So, I mean, if, if, if in the United States, they drop their leaves you know, in the autumn or fall time, that's why we call it fall, fallen leaves. You know, when do the leaves drop in Costa Rica? And um, of course, Karen says that, uh, well, I believe any tree leaves change colors. Uh, it takes the cold to change them. Hey, that's a good point there, Karen. It does take the cold to change them. Uh, now, A.B. Ginger has kind of a point there. A.B. Ginger says they drop nonstop where she lives at. Some brown lots, brown lots green leaf cleaner every two weeks comes by. Uh, hey, Doug ought to know because Doug uh, comes to Costa Rica bit and says, uh, yes, leaves drop off. Not all, but shed new growth. I've noticed that in December, new growth coming by March. Okay. And uh, Wreckish says November-ish. Okay. So here's the answer. And I'm going to give you the answer. Uh, what we've seen on our perspective, uh, where we're at right now, and where really every place we've lived at in Costa Rica, the leaves begin dropping uh, within the first, uh, I guess, about two months is after dry season starts. Soon as dry season starts, uh, it gets so dry, and then that's what creates a uh, a stress on the trees. They're not getting nearly as much rain. That's why it's called green season in the wet season. The wet season, it's green season. Uh, lots of rain, and, and they're just flourishing. Lots of green everywhere. They're never dropping leaves during the wet season. 
Yeah, and of course, it depends on the kind of trees because some are evergreen. That's right. And they don't lose their leaves or their needles or anything. Um, right. You know, they, but we, we have seen some trees get completely like naked. Like yeah. they drop all of their leaves and then, as Doug was saying, um, growth, new growth. That's right. And, you know, it's, it's very rare to see like, but we've got a couple of trees here. So like uh, uh, someone said, depending on the tree, we've got a couple of trees where they just completely naked, like in the United States, but within a matter of weeks, they're putting on new growth. Whereas in the United States, you know, uh, they'll all the, you know, a lot of the trees will be completely naked for two or three months. Right. And it's you not see, till spring that they butt out. Right. You see tons of trees like you're just driving down the highway and everywhere you look, the trees have lost their leaves. That's right. But in Costa but Rica, really see that here. right. You don't see that here. But every year during the summer, you know, after a couple of months, it starts drying up. The trees stress. They start dropping their leaves. And so right now I'm actually using a, a blower to blow the leaves. And it's the end of summer. And so it's dropped a lot of leaves. But, you know, we're seeing the trees, you know, yeah. they, in, in they butt out. And season, the, uh, the grass gets really, really crunchy. <laughs> oh, yeah. And the dry season. Because it really gets dry. I mean, like the ground will start to crack and uh, shrink. And the, the grass is stressed. And in the U.S., people tend to water their lawns. Well, they don't do that here because rainy season is about to come. Why water? The well, in, in Costa Rica, uh, you know, By the time not, not every rain. not every place in Costa Rica. Uh, most places in Costa Rica, especially the country, they, they're like, gringo, you stupid, man. You loco, you watering your grass. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, they, they make fun of me at watering my grass, but I like my grass to be green. I like to cut my grass and it be pretty. Okay. Well, a lot of Ticos will actually spray weed poisoning on their grass because they don't want to have to cut it, right? Because it's cheaper than paying someone to cut it. And so uh, it's a different concept. But we've lived in a lot of places like when we were lived at uh, Pedro Goso. Uh, it was in the city. Some people had some really pretty lawns where they actually they had, had someone cut it. And they had, had yeah. every so it's not time. every Tico. Uh, we're just telling you that for the most part, most Ticos really don't care. But there are a lot of Ticos. Well, and depending depends, on where they live. Depending on where they live, some areas like um, Petrero Grande experienced a water shortage um, during dry season. So the, the water tables dropped. That's, That's right. How you say mm -hmm. it? The, the water, water tables the water dropped level, during the dry season. Yeah, mm -hmm. drop, and so they're not wasting, yeah. you know, they're not watering their lawns. Because once rainy season starts, it's like, it's amazing. Yeah. Everything just starts to be so lush and green again. And here, what uh, Puerto Vida Dream says is I've heard that the best time to plant new trees are mid early March, just as the rains are beginning to uh, begin now. Absolutely. And she's saying the Guanacaste area. Now uh, I, I, I would, I would say, let me back up. I would say, don't ever start plant. Don't plant your tree until it starts raining. So it normally starts raining in May. Wait until You've gotten, you know, a good solid week or two weeks of continuous rain because then it's going to rain for six months. Because if you if you do plant in March and uh, now you got to water that baby for a month or two months until the rains take over. So always wait until rainy season begins. It's already begun a couple of weeks. Plant now. Last year. We were in El La Nina, and so, man, we planted, I think, 100 or 200 hibiscus plants to make us a living fence. I didn't know we were going to go through La Nina. <laughs> we lost a ton of them because it didn't rain. I mean, we got we got a little bit of rain, and we still got a bunch that live. But I'm glad that you brought that up, Puerto Vida Dreams, okay? Something I wanted to go back to when we were talking about temperatures. Mm -hmm. I wanted to share how, like, when we leave here, and drive to San Jose, let's say. This is the what I pack. I pack a coat, a blanket, an umbrella, rubber boots, make sure I have a flashlight and a machete, and I leave out of here with with uh, boots on because we've got to open the gates and do all of that. And by the time I get down to um, where it's it's like a uh, sea level down in Buenos Aires, you know, the, hot, the boots hot, are coming hot. off. Yeah, I'm putting my hair up. Um, and so 
riding that whole way. Then when we start going over the mountain, when we get around uh, La Georgina, La Georgina, yeah, and you're getting up to Morto, yeah, yeah. The, the altitude, then it's really cold. Like we're putting the windows up, and we're and we're putting on, we're our, putting jackets. on our jackets. I'm putting on so my, I'm, I'm putting my socks back on, you know. And so then we make it over that mountain ridge, and I find uh, San Jose the temperature is like just perfect it's um you don't really have to have a jacket you can wear one if you want but if it gets breezy you got to have a light jacket right. you know especially at night but anyway that's the just that drive which is about a six is it six hours for us now if we go yeah, it's okay. a long drive for us six yeah. hours to get to san jose and of course if we take the coast the it's a little bit longer pass, then we don't have those extreme uh, yeah temperature know, cool changes temperature. right it just mm -hmm. you know i don't have to bring a jacket or or blanket yeah. because it's pretty hot that whole stretch yeah and and okay to tell you how the temperatures are pretty even and mild even though we're saying hot and cold and it's not our core has never the vehicle we have has never had a heater nor air an air conditioner it's old 26 years old <laughs> i mean <laughs> neither one of them work they don't work <laughs> so that's why we have to if we had a heater in the car we wouldn't have to uh cover Jackets. up but yeah and um and we don't have an air conditioner so when we're going through the you know passing through the the beach route yeah we have the windows down and the air blowing yeah. so um very few houses have we lived in have we had um air conditioning we've never had heat yeah well matter of fact look now, uh, did get cold last night we had a Woo! record temperature. You're going to have to share yeah. that with them. But hold on. Let me. Mm -hmm. um, so we've never had heat in any home that we've lived in. We've house set homes that had AC. And that was really nice at night on the beach. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. every house that we've stayed in on the beach, it was quite the relief. Uh, they didn't they didn't have um, AC in the whole house, just in the in the bedrooms. So um, but money solves a multitude of issues. Yeah. We've seen these mm -hmm. huge houses that are fully air conditioned they have the dehumidifiers you know and yeah if that. you're gonna if you're just dead set on living on the beach then uh, like rebecca said money solves a multitude of issues you need to have if i were going to live on the beach then i would have to have enough money that i could just make the whole front of it out toward the beach all super thick glass and i'd have all this crazy good air conditioning with fans you know dehumidifiers where my office is at so that i don't get that salt air on my computers and stuff and you'd want to have some kind of solar some kind of alternate uh source of um energy for to run your acs because it's because, going to be extremely expensive right. to have electricity and to have a house like that it is it's expensive um the way the rates work here the more you use, the higher, the more expensive it yeah, is. Yeah, the more expensive it is per kilowatt, is it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so you know, uh, and and I guess the last question here, but we're going to take questions. Is you know, what is the weather like where we live at? And like Rebecca said, you know, she's saying, and a lot of people, a lot of people say that the most perfect weather in Costa Rica is in the San Jose uh, metropolitan area, that Central Valley. It is really nice, uh, but we live in an area that the weather is, uh, I think, better than that, or very, very similar to that. So uh, take a look at this right here. This is. Uh, a thermometer by Thermo Pro, Thermo I Pro. No, it's just Thermo Pro. I think it is. So if you take a look at that, that says Thermo Thermo Pro, and so it, you know, it it has this thermometer that gives me the temperature of where I'm at right now. And of course, right now it says it's 76 degrees uh, right here on the inside of this barn, but it says it's 72 degrees outside, which means there's an, a another unit. Uh, attached to a tree out in the uh, open where it gets a lot of sun, a lot of wind and all that. So it's 72 degrees there. Okay. Now, uh, this keeps a record of the coldest and hottest temperature. So let me show you that to give you an idea. What is the coldest it's ever been? Because the other day, as Rebecca told you, we had record lows, the coldest it's ever been since we've been keeping a record of the weather and i've been keeping record of the weather with this thermometer right here what, so let me show you about a year or two uh well almost two years i got this a little after we got here okay so let me take a look right here the it says that the maximum was 92 outside 84 inside so 92 uh and that's just out in a bald open sun i don't know what time of the year that was uh okay so it was 92 
uh, and it says it was 92 outside. But in all reality, I don't know if it really got that hot here. I guess it could have here, but I may have brought this with me when I was at Hako, but I doubt it, though. I, I know I did, but I think I reset it. But what is the coldest it has been? Because we had record lows the other day, which brings up another topic. Here it is, record low. We had 51.3 degrees Fahrenheit, okay, and 54 degrees inside the house where we're sleeping at over there, okay? 51 degrees, record lows, okay, where we're at. And now, typically, normally, it, it doesn't drop below 60 uh, normally. So normally, because, hey, while it might have been 92 degrees out in the sun, we're never out in the ball open sun. I might be out there in working, the cutting grass. We're always in the shade. So typically we're in the house, it's between 60 degrees in the morning, 80 degrees uh, during the rest of the day because the house is in the shade. But here's a trick question, okay? When is the coldest, 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 coldest part of Costa Rica? What time of the year is the coldest? What time of the year is the coldest in Costa Rica? Okay. Rebecca says she doesn't know. Oh, the, I have an idea. You got an idea? Tell me. I don't know when the season falls, but when there's no cloud cover, because the heat from the day escapes. But when there's cloud cover, it kind of holds the heat in. Okay. So she is right. Free so night sky means most people cold. would say that the coldest time of the year in Costa Rica would be in the winter or in the rainy season. And on average, that would be correct. But the absolute coldest time of the year is right now at the very end of the dry season. And that is because there's no clouds whatsoever. When there's clouds, it's kind of like a blanket. And it holds that heat in. But when you have, when there's no clouds, all of the heat escapes. And that's why we had record lows just two nights ago. And it dropped down to 51 degrees in the morning. Now, obviously, that's worthless information. <laughs> okay. Because the coldest part of the year is indeed the rainy season where on average it is cold and it's cold because you got so much moisture so much rain and you don't get enough sun so i gave you worthless information i gave you good information i just know <laughs> that at the end of dry season i'm ready for the rainy season to come i'm ready for that relief you know the absolutely the from the heat and it's not really that hot but um, it never gets that hot but, you know, you'll find out when you're talking to Ticos and anyone else that's been living in Costa Rica, while you get a lot of negative stuff on the Internet about the rainy season, the rainy season, don't go to Costa Rica in the rainy season. That's really the best time to go. Yes. You get the best right. deals on travel and uh, tourism. And, you, you know, to plan. yeah, and, you know, do your stuff in the morning and then plan to uh, take a siesta. Enjoy the uh, that's I love rainy season for that. I like to take a nap in rainy season, absolutely. Rebecca's favorite time is taking a nap. I mean, it look rainy season come, you know, uh, like I said, around two o'clock, 12 o'clock. She's like, We just got through eating lunch, and she's like, It's starting to rain, let's go take a nap, baby. Wink, 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 wink. <laughs> I'm very, very fortunate that I have a job that I work, you know, it's flexible. So I'm, I'm able to do that. Hey, hey, Doug, guys, all the other guys on here, is it just me or am I a sucker for a woman that starts batting her eyelids at you? I don't know. Let's go take a nap. But I'm not tired. Yeah, but come on, baby. Wink, a wink, a wink, a wink, a wink. TMI, TMI. TMI, TMI. Anyway, anyway. So, hey. We'll take questions now. I, hey, I've had a whole lot of fun. It's already been almost an hour, but I love to answer questions. So I, thanks for all the input, all the comments. That's neat. You know, so, uh, you know, so it's, it, look, I'm, I'm going to kind of scan through here and look, really appreciate a lot of people down here, you know, like uh, Mindful Grind saying, sending good vibes, super cool that you made the live stream. Happy Easter. You know, uh, a lot of people that have, have really given us some, you know, a lot of people has emailed us and has encouraged us and lots of great, great stuff. Really appreciate all you folks and, and really glad that you could join us live. You know, our whole goal is just to really give you uh, the facts, you know, the good, the bad and the ugly about Costa Rica. But I can guarantee you, uh, you'll love questions? it. Yeah, let's take questions. And uh, <coughs> Karen, Karen, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it, Karen. <laughs> 
I don't want to hear it, Karen. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so anyway, uh, so so hey, if you got some questions uh, concerning the weather, you got questions concerning uh, anything in Costa Rica. Hey, a couple of minutes here because we've almost been an hour. A couple of minutes. We'll be more than glad to answer your questions. Because, hey, we certainly enjoy, uh, we have way too much fun. Okay. So, hey, now that's a good question, Karen. Uh, Ash, she says, what's happening with the money? I understand the dollar's not doing well there now. <clears throat> no, the dollar is probably worse than it's been in a very, very, very long time. And, and now this is just my opinion, just my opinion. I don't want to start any debates. But the reason that the dollar is bad right now is because of our government system in the United States. Uh, I really believe that after this election, if we get a better president in, I think we're going to see the dollar pick up and do so much better. But I really think that the money, uh, I think our current uh, administration is just trying to kill the United States, kill the dollar. OK, and uh, I won't get into all of that stuff. But in my opinion, that's your answer, Karen. But I think that, you know, November we have an election and I think it's going to pick up. Uh now, hey, good question here. Mindful Grind says, is it too humid to build into the ground to keep your home cooler in the summertime? No, it's not too humid. But in Costa Rica, the ground is very, very different than uh, a lot of places in the United States. Uh, a lot of the ground is very, very porous, which means uh, with all of the rain we get, we get a ton of rain and because it's porous. Well, then the rainwater goes into the ground, which means if you build in the ground, not saying you can't, but you better know how to seal it so that you don't get water into your cellar. OK, so, yes, you can build into the ground, but you better know how to seal it. You can do it. OK, and then then, you know, so anyway, I hope that answers your question. <laughs> OK, now Reckon says that uh, Atenas apparently has some of the best client, climate and that's over in that Central Valley. Uh, and so, yeah, that is really, really yeah, nice. Heard that. That's a very desirable um, area. <clears throat> yeah. Matter of fact, we're, you know, uh, as you know, I've been really busy on the homestead, building the house. And once we get done with the house, we're going to get a chance to kind of go out, do a little bit more traveling and uh, seeing some other areas. And I want to go check out that area. And Nancy says, you're so right on that for the money. Same thing in Canada. Yeah, so, hey, thanks Canada for sharing your perspective on that. We do, oh, yeah. According to our Canadian friends. Yeah, Canada has got it way worse than, than we have. Thanks for sharing that. So, uh, hey, any other comments, questions, feedback? Uh, hey, sorry I started late. Man, I just forgot to hit the go live button. <laughs> and look, right at 430, I went live on my own. <laughs> I was having a good time. I was on a roll. So anyway, okay, folks. Hey, I guess that's it. Uh, hey, happy Easter. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Uh, I hope you all had a great week. Thank you so much for joining me today. Please like, subscribe, share. Uh, I greatly appreciate all of you. Uh, and really thank you for taking time to comment. You can really support us in a great, great way by making sure to comment after this video is over, comment below the video that tells the algorithm at YouTube that you enjoy this. Uh, whenever you share it, when you like it, it tells the algorithm that this is good information and that they should push it out to other people. So greatly, greatly appreciate all of you. Have a great one. We will see you next Sunday on the, what is it? What are Unrivaled. we going to Unrivaled Living in Costa Rica podcast. <laughs> the only place that you're going to get the good the bad, and the ugly about Costa Rica. But guarantee you, once you learn all the facts, I promise you, for us, there's way more pros than there are cons. See you next week.